Well, good afternoon and welcome back to Joellen's Kitchen. Today we're going to make a Pennsylvania Dutch dish called filled noodles. What on earth are filled noodles? Well, in short, it's a ground hamburger wrapped in dough and cooked in gravy for about an hour, short version. So let's start with some homemade dough. Of course, if you want, you can use Pillsbury pie crust or I was thinking another kind of fluffier version might be those little croissants that you can get that roll up. You could probably make individual ones like that and do the same thing and they get a little puffier. But we're going to follow the old fashioned Dutch recipe today and we're going to start with two cups of flour and to that we're going to add one egg. We're also going to add half a teaspoon of salt. Now, I'm so used to doing salt, I just do it in the palm of my hand, but I'm gonna throw in a half a teaspoon of salt. Spoons of water. So, one, two, three. And you just wanna get in there with your hands. Uh, you can start by mixing it with a spoon or a spatula or a wooden uh, utensil spoon if you like, but Bottom line is you're going to have to get in there sooner or later and mix this dough by hand. Take off your rings. You don't want all that dough and flour inside your rings. Nine, ten. My trick to rolling out pie dough is to place the dough between two pieces of wax paper. And of course, if you have a little flour in the bottom of your bowl, it doesn't hurt to put the flour down first and spread it around so that it peels off real easily. and gets absorbed into this ball of dough. And we're going to put the other piece on top and get a rolling pin and, and we're going to roll it out into a rectangle if we can, the best we can with our rolling pin, back and forth to the width of my little pattern here, which is a silicone mat. And then I'm going to turn it longwise so I can roll it lengthwise. It's not going to be perfect, but you'll get the idea. It's not a perfect circle like you were making a pie crust. Now there's only two of us, so this two cups of flour is going to be a lot for us. If you have a larger family, you want to increase the size of the recipe, double it, triple it, whatever you need. Or if you have company coming over and they ask for a Pennsylvania Dutch dish, you'll find that there's no Crisco in this flour and it resembles the survival um, dough that they made wafers out of during the depression and other times throughout history so uh they were there they would just bake the dough plain cut it into uh, maybe three inch i don't know whatever three inch uh, squares poke little holes in it and then they could store it and keep it in some sort of a sealed container and that's what they would live on and if they could get eggs here and there or from chickens or ducks or geese whatever happened to be in their backyard 
they survived somehow. Uh, even when they had no food and food was taken from them to feed the troops and the troops had to battle so they needed to have strength to move. But the farmers were very industrious. At any rate, enough about the history. We can peel this wax paper off of our dough. And the next step is to get some of our ground cooked hamburger that I have in my crock pot stewing. And you can fry it on the stove. It doesn't really matter. It just was convenient for me today to put it on to, into my crock pot. So I'll be back. So I think I'm going to just reuse my mixing bowl that I had for my pie dough. And I've measured out here a cup of hamburger. I'm going to put that into my bowl. Letting the juice down in the bottom. And while I'm preparing this, what I'm going to do is put two tablespoons of butter into my trusty copper kettle. And I'm going to melt that. So just a double assurance that nothing sticks. Get this started on low on my little cook stove here. Now my husband really doesn't like onions, so I'm not going to put onions in mine, but a sm I do recommend a small chopped onion be added. Uh, to me it gives it a lot of extra flavor so that the hamburger and breadcrumbs that we're going to put in all stick together when we bake. We're going to add one egg, so it gives a little glue, so to speak. But I add about a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. And of course we want salt and pepper to taste, so I don't put a lot of pepper in. If you like a lot of pepper, go for it. But I do want no more than half a teaspoon of salt. And then we want to mix this little conglomeration here, make sure that hamburger's chopped up real fine. This is a handmade wooden, it's not really a spoon, but it's a great little mixer. I got this down at Schaefer's Town. They have uh, the Rex House and they have the Alexander Schaefer Farm, and they have a bit of a museum there too. And at one of those places they had handmade wooden utensils and I picked this up and I love it. It fits nice in my hand, it feels smooth, it's the right width for me to hold on to, and boy can I chop and carry on with it and mix things really good. So that looks like it's sticking together pretty good. And I'm just going to pour right in the center of my pie dough. Hopefully you can see that. Move it over here a little bit more. And I'm going to spread this out almost to the ends, not all the way. And on one end, what I want to do is get my fingers in the water down to it, because we're going to roll this into a pinwheel. You can also cut squares and like fill half and do it like a triangle and put it over, but I think the pinwheels are kind of fun. Here I have a little water. I'm just going to rub it on the end down here. Again, so it softens till I get there. And I figure, I didn't go all the way to the edge with my hamburger because I figure some of it's going to squeeze out that way as I roll. And to roll it, I just start simply by lifting my wax paper Try and fold it back as I go so you can see and push down on it a little bit and roll it. And you can see it's starting a roll here. And I might have to throw some pieces of hamburger back in if they come out the edge. Oh yeah, it's coming out nice. Whoops, there's a piece. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, and we have one big roll of round hamburger and then we need a nice knife I just happen to have one handy I'm going to pinch my ends together too so it doesn't push out when I'm cutting it and uh, we have this nice little log or roll if you will of wrapped up hamburger and we're going to cut it into about one inch pieces 
I hear my butter cooking, so it's perfect cue. And we're going to cook this in gravy. Now, you can make gravy from scratch if you like, using some of your hamburger, but I am going to use some canned beef gravy, just as a shortcut, because when I'm really busy, I don't have time to do it all by hand. I just picked up two cans at the grocery store. Now, if you can see my old-fashioned can opener here on the wall, it's a 50s, actually. And I just stick my can up in there and turn it. This is so reliable. It's amazing. I love it. Get my lid off. I'm going to open both of them right away because I do plan on using both of them. My melted brown butter is in there and I'm going to put in one can of the gravy on the bottom. Just like that. And I brought over my pinwheels, if you will. And I'm going to start laying those in there face up. Ooh, these look nice. Very nice. What I'm going to do is pour my other can of gravy over top. I'm going to pour this other can of gravy across the top. Beautiful. And goes our half a can of water to make sure that it doesn't dry out too much. We're going to add a lid to this. And we it's, it's barely boiling now, so we want to turn it down just a hair so it like simmers slash almost boils for about an hour. I hope it turns out great. I know it'll be a, a wonderful addition. Um, again, good old Pennsylvania Dutch cooking. Okay. It's time to try out my filled noodles. They look wonderful. The dough actually puffed up some. And the gravy's a little thicker, which is fine, but I can also scoop some of it and put it on top. And let's try it out. It's been cooking about an hour. Tastes a little like beef pot pie in a gravy sauce with the dough and the hamburger. It's easy to cut with the spoon. It's a good hearty Pennsylvania Dutch meal. I hope you enjoy it.